The views, comments, and opinions of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of Morris Media Studios, MorrisMediaLive.com, or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. As a small biz pro, I saw we roll using procurement program and control. As a small biz pro, I saw we grow using procurement program and control. I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. I'm a business man, yes, I'm an entrepreneur. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert Buchanan, your small business paramedic. Hey, how are you? I am doing fine, Crystal. Today we don't have any guests in the studios, but uh, we're going to talk about some great topics like organizational charts. So, and we're going to talk about Black history, and then. we're going to talk about Black history as well. Uh, talk about wealth within the black community and how we can go about uh, garnering that wealth. So yeah. we're going to talk about some good stuff. So Crystal. We are. This morning I was at the Edison um, Black History Month event. Oh, okay. How did that go? It was excellent one. It was right here in my own little backyard. It, really? It wasn't in Rosemead. It I wasn't didn't, urban. I didn't even know about that. They don't tell you? No. They don't tell me anything. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, they do a... They um, sent you an invitation? They Yeah, they sent... They, well, because we're community partners, right? Oh. And so they have, every year they do a big community thing. And usually it's in Rosemead at their that training center out there. Yeah. But this year it was in Inglewood. So see, you guys are getting priority over me. <laughs> yeah, you work for them. And uh, yeah, we got some priority over you. And... Uh, uh, so it was good. It. Um, what did they talk about? Uh, they they you know they honored a couple of uh, their their uh, I guess suppliers, mm-hmm. and uh, then they um, uh, they honored a couple of their suppliers. Then they had a panel talking about um, um, supporting black businesses and black businesses supporting each other mm-hmm. and capital for businesses and things like that. And, uh, and RBD got a shout out cause there was a couple of people uh, that stood up. There's a young lady that I'm going to have on the show. Mm-hmm. She has a business called IQ clean tech, I think. Mm-hmm. So she's a CEO, one of the youngest CEOs for this company. Right. So I'm going to reach out to her. I'm going to get a, I got someone that used to be the director for a California art museum. Mm-hmm. She's going to, she and her husband is going to come in and talk about a uh, trademark, and intellectual property oh, and good. visual arts and mu- and her husband's in the music business. Mm-hmm. So they're going to come in and talk about those, those entities that are on, um, that we need to talk about as far as trademarking, trademarking your, uh, your intellectual property. Right. So she's excited. Uh, so I made a lot of connections, but w- one of the things that they were talking about is how one person stood up. It's like, well, I don't know how to find the black businesses. Yeah. So, you know, when I walk into a room, everybody know I'm there because yeah, that's man. the purpose. They got to know I'm there. <laughs> I cannot be in a room where you don't know I'm in the room. That's what I'm talking and about. And so, um, so when that person said that, people were waving their hand and pointing, and then I was waving my <laughs> that's hand. That's great. And then Means I, you got some recognition. <laughs> I got some recognition <laughs> to let them know Recycling Black Dollars is here. We that's can tell right. you. And if it's not in this book, <laughs> yeah. then between me and Jackie, yeah. we can tell you where they are. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I like that. I like that. And so folks were running over wanting the book. Yeah. That's good. And so that was really pretty cool. All right. So did you sell a few copies? Well, of the we book had or? taken the book uh, to hand out to strategic. As free. As free. Copies. As free oh, okay. to the ones that our, a couple of our sponsors were there. So oh, okay. our, that our advertisers so we'll, that we'll advertise them the book. with a few copies. Yeah. So yeah. now we got some people coming to the meeting yeah. and, and, and the book is also going to be. So the new resource guide, I don't even have a copy because Jackie handed them out. Oh, okay. um, but the new resource guide has been published, yeah. and we are uh, on the cover of the new resource guide this year is the, our legacy businesses. So right. we have uh, the Doolins, uh, that, which is a legacy business. On the cover? On the cover, cover of the okay. book. We have uh, um, uh, Jeanette. She actually runs the 27th 27 Street Bakery. Right. And we have the Sentinel. 
Oh, very good. And I can't remember the other two. Oh, the Bowers Cleaners. Mm -hmm. they're, they've been in the community for... Oh, they are one of those new people who just got a street named after them. Right. They got yeah. a street name. We were there for that. Hi, Naja. Um, hey, Karen. Um, so, yeah, they did a street name after them in November. Yes. Um, so they're all on the cover, Gracie. And they're going to be at our meeting on Tuesday. Very good. Which is at Denny's at 8 o'clock. It's our second Tuesday of the month networking mm -hmm. event. Come yeah. on out. We will have books available there for you. So very good. That yeah, sounds so, good. Sound like you you uh, created a, a decent splash there at that event. I, I, I created a splash. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a splash. A splash. A decent splash. <laughs> because that's what it's about for yes. <laughs> for uh, Black History Month. How hey, do, how hey do Daniel we Lawson, welcome to the Business Zone. Thank you for watching, my brother. I really appreciate it. And. Uh, you said you might get a deal soon. Uh, give us a call. Let us know what type of deal that is. If it's a, a record deal or what type of deal it is. You don't have to tell us with whom, you know, since you haven't signed on the dotted line yet. But give us a call. We're promoting black businesses this month. This is Black History Month. And, of course, with us, black history goes for 12 months. So it's going to yeah, be all it, year long. Right. So we, 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 we appease them by letting them think yes. that we are right with one month. <laughs> now, if you black, it should be going on should every single all day, year, all, all year. day long. But we'll appease, we'll appease the population. <laughs> we, we're happy. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you, our new website is up. Oh, really now? Yeah. I want to see it. So for anyone, go to the Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert uh -huh. com. And up in the corner, you can watch us live because it's clicked into where you need to oh, go. Wow. So, That's and there's three, four different places that you can find it. So you cannot say you can't find it. You can see it in real time. Yes, both of us. Right. I right. mean, it's great. I uh, want to book. Uh, Naja, just come to the breakfast me meeting on Tuesday. You yes. can get the book, or go to Malik's next week. Right. Um. So anyway, um. Uh, so uh. So we're excited. I'm excited about That's that. Good. It looks good. I still got some pieces. There's some other pieces that so got to be added. How, how do they log in? They go to www. The business, business zone, zone with Crystal and Gilbert. With Crystal and Gilbert. So that's how, that's how you get to our new website, folks. You want to go to www. Uh, the business zone with Crystal and Gilbert. Com. And you'll see some amazing things. We'll even have some amazing giveaways on it. Uh, yeah, we're going to do some giveaways. Yeah, we're going to give away some consulting time and, you know, other things, other tools that you guys can use. So check it out. We're going big with this thing. We're going international. <laughs> Daniel, you give us a call, okay? 323-293-3375. Give us a call here in the studios. Hey, Ronnie. Welcome to the Business Zone. Yeah, so I'm excited. It took a little oh, minute. Oh, that's great. It actually took me longer to get it connected to yeah. the domain name, oh, so yeah. I had to get some assistance. But now we are live, oh, and man. so now we have a website. Uh, We're going to be able to work with some ad Google AdWords because uh, I got a lot of verbiage uh, on it, and I just picked it's, it's a site that I'm proud of. Yeah. Um, we still well, got... you should be proud of it. You made it. <laughs> <laughs> you made it. <laughs> well, you know how I am. I, I think in another life, I probably would have been a great geek. <laughs> That is good. I love it. But I like girl it. geek. We need uh, but, a, we need some more girl geeks. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm excited about that. Um, what else is going on? Um, uh, well, I think that's a big milestone. Oh, you know, for I sure. did not like the other website. Oh, yeah, that one. And we so, need we need to do our logo too. We need to yeah, we need to logo. redo our logo. Oh, so, on our Facebook page. Yes. Go see what I did on our Facebook page. All righty then. Let me check. Tell it me, out. guys, if you guys <laughs> like it. I, I added some, that picture, those pictures we took a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I got you smiling. Oh, uh, good. <laughs> good. Because <laughs> you know that's my best, my best feature, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you have a beautiful smile, uh, so you should smile you. all the time. Thank you. So, um, hey, Mohan, welcome to the Business Zone. Appreciate you logging in. So, uh, February is Black History Month yes. and African American History Month. What do you want to ever call us? As long as you call us in the right name. <laughs> as long as you call us for a contract. <laughs> but in call, the right name. You can call black people anything you want as long as you call us for a contract. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it basically is a national, nationwide celebration that calls all, Afri all Americans to reflect on the significant roles that African Americans have played in shaping the U.S. history. Uh -huh. um, 
Uh, the celebration uh, it came about in February. Uh, the man behind it, his name is Carter G. Woodson. He considered a pioneer in the study of African-American history and is given much of the credit for Black History Month. He was the son of a former slave. He spent his childhood working in coal mines and quarries, and he received his education during a four-month term that was customary for black schools at the time. Mm -hmm. At 19, he taught himself English fundamentals and arithmetic. <coughs> he entered high school where he went to college. He finished his four years and two years, and he earned his master's degree in history from the University of Chicago. That is amazing. And later earned a doctorate from Harvard. That is amazing. <coughs> so he was disturbed with the fact that, <coughs> excuse me, our textbooks ignored our black population. Mm -mm -mm. And <coughs> in 1926. I'm take a quick break and mm -hmm. uh, come back. Um, and yeah. And he believed that the achievements of the Negro pro uh, properly set forth would crown him as a factor. And so it's interesting. <coughs> excuse me that we create our own narratives mm -hmm. because everyone is telling our stories. You got to tell your own story. And we have to tell our own story. So <clears throat> a reason why we're here on air yeah. is to tell the stories that, that apply to us <coughs> as a business. Yes. I have a cough drop uh, as a business and as people, mm -hmm. because we, when you really stop to think about the accomplishments that we have made right. as people, mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. We right. started with absolutely nothing. That's true. Um, straight out of slavery mm -hmm. with no invest. And, and that's the thing when we talk about today, you know, we can't run our businesses because we don't have capital. But then we have to stop and think about our ancestors. Mm hmm. How did they do it? They, they didn't, didn't have, have anything, capital. right? They had no homes. They Here they are, <coughs> straight out of slavery. And that's how the barter system got started. Because, it's exactly. Because we didn't have money, we didn't have uh, financial resources to start, run, or maintain our business. We had to barter with each other. So, you know, if, if, if you had a, a business consultant that can do management uh, processes within your business and then there's a little guy around the corner that does bookkeeping, then you would exchange those services. Right. And we almost need to go back to those ways. Yeah, we should. Collaboration we should. is when we you don't have one thing, yeah. then you can. There are others out there that yeah. do, that that can complement what you do. We yeah. don't have to mistrust ourselves right. and, and each other <laughs> because our ancestors use that to their benefit mm -hmm. in order to create the the wealth that they did have in right. the early days. Right. So right. it's really important. And one of the things I wanted to talk about that 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 we're going to lead into from from um, from Black History, and if Ron, if you'll put that picture up, is there's a book that I've been reading called "The Color of Money: mm -hmm. Black Banks and the Racial Wealth Guide." And so this was written by, um, and she she's over at uh, USC. Her mm -hmm. name is Maresha yeah. uh, Baran Bar Bararanda Bararan. Mm -hmm. Right. And she's written a book on um, right out of um, out of slavery right. that money has always been an issue for us, capital. Mm -hmm. And even when they created banks that were created for us, they really weren't. Mm -hmm. Right. They still, it, it, you know, the Freeman Bank was created for us, but at the same time, it limited monies that would come to us. Mm -hmm. And then... But it was a promise. So after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed right. in 1863, the black community owned less than 1% of the total wealth in America. Mm. And more than 150 years later, mm -hmm. the, the number has barely budged. Mm -mm -mm. But in between that, you did have Black Wall Street. It was not just Black Wall Street. Yeah. There were a number of... Um, cities that had very similar situations with Black Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Black Wall Street was so successful that it became a target because it's always it's going to it's going to it comes down to it's a threat. There was a threat it's to a threat. the threat and in their mind the ones that were um the colonizers mm -hmm. 
we're there to be the service for them. Hey, Alfred, welcome to the business zone. And so when we, even though, so it's like a, a catch 22, right? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Mm-hmm. Be self-sufficient. Yeah. We don't want to support you. Yeah. But then on the other hand, we go do that. Yeah. And then what happens? Yeah. They try to beat us down or, or, or sabotage us or hinder us. Right. Yes. So it's a catch 22. Right. So you either want us to be subs- subs- uh, uh, sustainable on right. our own right. or you don't. Well, the, the thing is, they don't really want us to be su- sustainable on our own. They want us to be sustainable under them, under their policy and procedure. Now, I know this isn't a part of the show. Uh, we didn't plan this for today. But I, I just want to talk about this one amazing African-American back in the 1850s, which is amazing. His name, his name was Stephen Smith. Okay. Stephen Smith, an amazing African-American. <laughs> he grew up as an indentured servant in Pennsylvania. And uh, at the age of 21, he was able to buy his freedom for $50. For $50, he was able to buy his freedom. Now, at that time, he was uh, working in a lumber yard, lumber, lumber yard business for the slave master. Mm-hmm. So what, when he purchased his freedom, he went out and he started his own lumber yard business. Mm-hmm. Because most of us who start businesses, we start business because we develop expertise working for someone else in those trades right, or field or industry. So that's what he did. That's the only thing he knew was the, the lumberyard business. So he went out, started his own business. And in uh, 1822, he added coal as well. Coal. You know, the mm-hmm. coal uh, added fuel to many homes. So mm-hmm. he added that too. Now, in 1850, he was able... So we're talking about the lumberyard business, 18, 1822. In 1850... He was grossing about $100,000 a year in annual sales. Now, 100000 back in 1850 was more than a million dollars now. Yeah, it was equivalent was to more than a million dollars now. Right. So he was pretty rich by that standard. So by 1857, he was worth 500000 a half a million, half a million. Yeah, there's so many of those in 1857. Like that. Now that's unheard of back then for a black person to be generating sales of five hundred thousand. Uh, actually, and, and and when you and and so I'm recommending everybody go get the book, The Color of Money, because it talks about. Yes. And then I just recently read a book about the top millionaires that were yes. coming out, and Stephen might have been one of those. Right. So what they did was they took their talents and their skills in there, and they created businesses. Right. And they could only sell to us. Right. And nobody else was buying it, right? Exactly. But what I respected out of that for all of these yes. was they were the ones that were supplying for the, uh, the they were abolitionists as yeah. well. Yeah. So they were supplying the money. Yeah. To help with the, the freedom the, of others. The freedom yeah. of others. The freedom fighters. The freedom fighters. Yes. So they were, they were using their freedom and their money. Yeah. In order to help Harriet Tubman right. go in right. and get them and, and take them through the Underground Railroad. Right. And that's something that we all as small businesses, whether you're black, Latino, it doesn't matter. You should understand that the concept that when you're suppressed by a system, you got to find ways of getting out of that system, become sustainable and self-sufficient and be able to provide for your family and others. Right. So that's what this this person, Mr. Stephen Smith, did back in the eighteen the eighteen twenties to eighteen fifties. Now, in eighteen fifty seven, when he was generating revenues of five hundred thousand, which is a half a million, that's equivalent to thirteen point five million today. Right. So back in eighteen fifty seven, when he was, you know, he was bawling. He was bawling. <laughs> he was bawling. It was worth about thirteen point five million. And, and remember, and we have to go back to the ori- to that time frame. So it wasn't like we have today. Even right. as a free man, right. he still had to be cautious yeah. on what he was doing. Oh yeah. And he couldn't let the world know right. what he was doing. But at the same time, yeah. he was taking he wasn't worried about whether he could find capital or not. Mm-hmm. He was using all of the energy. All of the resources. Because remember, their resources, our ancestors' resources was what made yeah. their, their the slave owners wealthy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It wasn't through them. Yeah. It was through the efforts 
and the heart aches and the hard work yeah. of the slaves that right. were doing the work. Right. So then they just took that. And I think we have to remember that even though we feel we don't have what we have, we have to use everything that we do have, all of our brains and our initiatives. Plus, we're way practice. advanced. We're way advanced now than our ancestors. Our ancestors were back in the 1850s because they didn't have computers. We've got that. Right. We've got access to the World Wide Web. So there's no resource out there that we shouldn't be able to obtain through the World Wide Web. Right. Exactly. Because you now, in fact, there was another guy that was very much like him. His name was the, um, his name is uh, A.G. Gaston. Yeah. And he's called the Black Titan. Mm. And he also was a very wealthy man. Uh -huh. So what he did was, he sold uh, cemetery plots. Yeah. Well, he had a mortuary. Mm -hmm. But then he realized. That's very good. I'm insight selling right them there. insurance. That's very they, good insight. Right. Right. There, I'm <laughs> selling them the insurance. And he was it was it was like five dollars or yeah, whatever. a month. Yeah. I'm selling them the insurance. That's genius. Now let me sell them the plots. Yeah. That's genius. And then he was able to take that money and then he opened up a bank and he actually funded black businesses. That's genius. And then he also supplied monies to, he was an abolitionist yeah. as well, yeah. and he supplied m money back in. Right. So if you guys read a book called The Black Fortunes, uh, A.G. AG Gaston, The Making of a Black American Millionaire, yeah. you will be blown away. So right. there were so many more than just the Madam C.J. Walker. Yeah. There was actually a woman prior to us, uh, Madam C.J. Walker. Yeah, Birmingham, Alabama. You're absolutely correct, uh, Naja, because I know that's Birmingham is your state. <laughs> um, so we have to just look at our history. Yeah, that's yeah. why we have to tell our story. And our, our history is our blueprint to success because our history teaches us a lot. It teaches us a lot of things that, and you know, they say history repeats itself, and it really does because... It's supposed to repeat itself because it's a blueprint. If it's a blueprint and you're going to use that to build a model, a process, a system, a community, then you should be able to do that over and over and, and over, over again. And, right. That's why history repeats itself. And that's a good thing. So you guys should do that. Now, I want to ask my Facebook and all my listeners out there, I want to ask all of you, what is keeping you back? What is stopping you from succeeding in your business? Is it you? Or is it external interference from others? Tell me. I know it's a combination. Some people are going to say it's a combination. But I want you to tell me what do you think is it stopping you. No, I think that's an excellent question because I, my brain as an entrepreneur, and there was a question asked today at the, at the, uh, when I was at Edison, and it said, did we think that entrepreneurs were born or were they made? Right. Right. Now, I know in my DNA that an entrepreneur gene is there yeah. because I don't think in the box. Mm -hmm. I've always thought out the box mm -hmm. and it's always been very difficult for me to work for people because yeah. I do think out of the box. Yes. So when I think of doing something that it is not a why can't I? Yeah. It's OK. What are the steps to get me to yeah. what I want to do? Exactly. And that's how you think. Exactly. Right? Oh, you're Jamaican. Sure. Oh, yeah, I come sure. with a whole bunch of jobs. For sure. Right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I, definitely. I don't know what tribe y'all came from, but y'all definitely came from the tribe that there is no one job in any. And nothing should stop us. Right. Yeah. So but when you start to think about it, Gilbert, when you think about your clients, yeah. do they think like that? Not really. Because they look at what is stopping them, yeah. why they can't yeah. do. Yeah, I mean, you're running a class right now, right? Right, right. And what's the reception? Is everybody like gun ho and no. saying, I can no. do this? And, no. oh, wow, thank you, Gilbert. <laughs> yeah. And then, and you can sit there when you're teaching, and I do this all the time, and I can tell the ones that really, because all of a sudden you can see their minds. Hi, Shanae. You can see their minds start to click, right? Yes. And and you go, oh, they got it. Yeah. They got it. They've right. already taken it, and they see a big picture. Right, And right. then you look, at, but that's only one or two people in mm -hmm. a classroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when you go to look at the rest, yeah. you got to really still got to feed They're it to They're going them. through the motions. They're going right. through the motions. So, right. So, you know, Crystal just brought up a very good point, uh, small businesses, and I just want to kind of amplify that a little bit. When you go to a workshop, a seminar, or a webinar, or whatever it is, you're participating, 
Don't just participate just to participate. You want to participate because one, you're learning something from it. You're bringing some value to it. And also you're, what, whatever you're taking away from it, it's going to help you to build your business, build your resources, build your community, build your team and your group. And, and don't think of it. So they're thinking of the information that you're providing them on getting contracts is pigeonholed just to that. Yeah. No, what you're teaching them is that's a result of, yes. but if you're following all these steps, yes. this is for everything that you everything do in business, right? Not do. just to get contracts. Right, right. That's a piece of it. Exactly. Exactly. But it will get you business ready. It'll right. get you bank loan ready. Exactly. And it'll get you contract ready. And it doesn't mean that you stop doing everything no. you do and just focus on contracts. No, no. no, that's a here's what we have to look at. And I think what really has to be emphasized to our clients and to to our audience is is you're optimizing the amount of revenue that you can bring in your business. Exactly. And as my as somebody of uh, uh, Michael Larson from the Urban League said, my new mantra is multiple streams of income. Yeah. That's what he's calling me, the multiple <laughs> streams of income girl. Because that's what we should be focusing oh, on. Oh, for sure. How do we create income coming in from not just because you can't just have money just be working contracts. No, no. Because money doesn't flow in like that no. from a contract. It's going to come from a variety of different ways. You know, right. you, you'll get contracts, you'll get the coaching, you'll get the consulting, you'll get the one-on-one, -on -one, you get the investments. Because when you're in business, you are supposed to invest. So that's another way that you make money. Right, exactly. And you have to think out of the box. Hey, Tanya, uh, Tanya. Congratulations on your new business. Um, this is one young lady that I'm going to use. She is last year, two years ago, I think it was two years ago, and you can correct me. She was, I think, coaching or I'm not quite sure what business she was in. Uh -huh. Now she owns a whole fleet of trucks. See, that's what I'm talking doing about. Doing a delivery, like that, I think like a, a FedEx. We need to bring her in on the yeah, show. Yeah, I want her to come in on the show. We she just started this business show. and she is just doing it. Gun ho. We have to think. Out of the box. She's Jamaican. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> we have to think, and I met her. You're welcome. What is the business that you're doing? Let us know. Um, and we definitely want you on the show. But uh, we have to think, like, what's the next big thing? Yeah. And how do we get into that? Because yes. if you go to the bank and say, I want to uh, own or uh, operate a, a fleet of trucks that's delivering FedEx packages you or for Amazon. No, yeah. they will give you money uh -huh. if you're talking, I want to become a partner with Amazon. Oh, in that case. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, so yeah. if you come there with something big like right. that, then, yeah, they'll see the future. And if you've lined up all your ducks mm -hmm. and you've made sure that the resources and the partners and, and you have a strong business model, mm -hmm. now it's worthwhile them investing in you, right? Right, right. So that's something that we, uh, and uh, last, mi last mile delivery, when you order online, my team's one of the many delivering. That's what that's she did. Unbelievable. So how many trucks do you have right now? Because the girl is working and That's she out it. there working it. I love it. Yeah, I'm so proud More of her. More power to you, my Jamaican sister. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but that's how we have to look. What's yeah. the future of business? What's yes. the future of entrepreneurship? Right, right, right. And how do we get in it? Mm -hmm. And how do we do like Stephen Smith? Yeah. So he saw, mm -hmm. we, we, so, you know, we have, there's a new world order. Right. So he I saw a pain in the she's marketplace. She's got 40 trucks. 40. That's unbelievable, man. That's and she just started this business a year ago. That's unbelievable. So, that's unheard of. So we have to be thinking like our ancestors. Yes. And that's why Black History right. Month is so important mm -hmm. because they had um, lots of odds, mm -hmm. insurmountable odds they had to, right. and hurdles and challenges right. that they had to overcome to make a million dollars or a hundred thousand and a half a million dollars back in the 1800s. Yeah. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. We have <clears throat> this new thing called Google and the internet yeah. that creates 
a possibility, unlimited possibility. Yeah. And we can do business globally, yeah. but we have to change our mindset. Got to change our mindset. Got to change our mindset. I, we can't say, I can't do social media. That just doesn't fit for me because you can't reach those other people. Yeah. You and I both know this. We're both looking at, okay, how many people can you actually bring into a class? Mm -hmm. And what's the struggle now? It's a yeah, struggle to get 25 struggle. people in it a classroom is, it nowadays. It is a struggle. It is a right? struggle. Yeah. So how do you maximize, how do you reach more people without stressing yourself to the place of mar you know, marketing? And, and, not, and we do a good job marketing. Yeah, it's going to be online. Gonna yeah, be so online we have to really classes. stop to think. So that's yeah. kind of what we were wanting to talk about today is how... Our history is the, or the, the, our history of our ancestors is our blueprint. Mm -hmm. That's right. That is right. Now, when you were in Jamaica, because um, you could pretty much kind of like in our ancestors, you had to create your own oh, yeah. opportunities, you right? Yeah, to create because there's nothing there. Right. You know, and there was no social welfare program to help us along. You don't have a job, you don't eat. Right, and and the cost of living is far greater than here oh, in America. Super, super high. Super high. Because gas is so, like ridiculous. Yeah. In, in so you got to figure out a way how to make things happen. You know, uh, some some numbers we received recently said the unemployment rate is about forty percent there in Jamaica. Wow. So you know, people had to feed. They they had to eat, and uh, people hustle. And you know, a lot of us we bartered. We bartered stuff. You know, we bartered services. We bartered food products, we bartered clothes, furniture, whatever it is, to make us survive. Mm -hmm. So in business, we can do the same thing. I just think that a lot of us right now, as small business on, and entrepreneurs, you know, we try to get over on the next person, and we don't value that person's time, their resources. So we try to get over on them, and you know, you, you, so when you're bartering, okay, yeah. if you usually sell your product for. Twenty dollars, right? When you're bartering, you're trying to jack up the rate, yeah. the, the value of the of the price or product or service to like fifty or a hundred when yeah. it was only worth twenty. If you're getting currency for it, right? So you know, people need to stop that. And even when you, um, when you partner with someone, um, you know, one feels. Let's say one has the money. To invest in the another business, yeah. the other person has the product yeah. or the service yeah. that okay, you got the money, I got the product, yeah. service. Let's come together. Right. Well, inevitably, somebody can say, "Well, I need to take that. If I got the money, I'm going to take the lion's share." Yeah. But this person's tools or system or product yeah. has the same value because the money is useless. That's it. Without the product, we should set up a system like that. Where we do like a little lab, we get ten businesses that provide ten different types of services, right? And they have to; they can't sell the service or the product to each other. They got to barter. So uh, that means when they barter, all of them should be better in six months. All of them should be better because if I'm a a, a consultant. You're right. a bookkeeper. Right. You're going to help me with my bookkeeper, and I'm helping you with your consulting. Exactly. So we're balanced now. Yeah. So all my weaknesses and my deficiencies are supposed to be solved by you and others. Right. And vice versa. And then that way we can create the revenue because now we're helping now each we're other. Now we're all solid, all 10 of us. Right, exactly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, you take a night. I like that idea. Yes. You take a incubator. And remember... Um, uh, Cecil McMillan, he came in. He was a he had he was he was been on the show twice. Yeah, I think I he, remember. He's him. the one with the cryptocurrency, yeah. but he has a business that that's what it's based upon. Yes. Kind of a bartering. Yes. kind. Yes. We had we, he talked about that one time when yes. he first came on. Yeah, we have to talk to him. But I like that idea. I think that so would be a great in, process. So if you are a marketer and you have a restaurant uh -huh. and you have. A cleaning service, yeah, and you have we help them. It's help kind of like a other. match yes. matchmaking service, yes. right? Yeah, help each other. So then, at the end of the program, everybody is on the same level in terms of their their capabilities and their competency because now they're ready. Yeah, you know, my bookkeeping is taken care of. Your marketing is taken care of. The management part is taken care. Of. You see what I'm saying? Right. So everybody is now ready to collectively go after this big one project. Right. 
So instead of, you know, you getting 200,000, me get 200,000, then we can all go after like a million dollar project or two million dollar right. project. Because now, uh, especially let's say we talk about contracts, right? Yes. So um, our small businesses, that's kind of their subcontractors all all built in exactly. to this network, exactly. right? You guys tell us, uh, call in yes. at 323 323- Two nine three 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 seven five, yes. and tell us what you think about that idea. Yes. that you create this nucleus of individuals yes. that come with different skill sets and different resources. The resources, to the, table. the one with the strongest uh, that can actually become the general contractor. Yeah, yes. and then. While you're building and getting yourself together, yeah. you guys are working a contract yes. that's supplying you yes. income. Yes. So now where you're lacking, yeah. that person, you, you'll you be getting paid right. money for that contract. And exactly. find a contract that's five, ten year yes. period and look at on the other side of that yeah. where you will be as a trying to do it Can by you yourself. Can you imagine how amazing that would be? That would be awesome. Man, <laughs> that would be. I think we should take this and run with it, man. Yeah, that would not be something right phenomenal. Now. Yeah, is uh showing them up and having and, and that I call that that would be like having a mastermind. Yeah, group. Yeah, of of those individuals. Right. Now we could do that, right? Yeah. We could bring go out and target. Right. Uh, let's say you looked at some of the general contracts. Yeah. So, so pick a general contractor, for example. So there are different parts to a project. You've got the electrical, you've got concrete, drywall, you know, mill work for the windows and counters and all of that. Right, you right, get right. all of those guys together. Make sure they're all certified. So all of them, you know, they right. get certified. Mm-hmm. Then each one takes care of the other person as to what needs to be done. And then together they go after these, this they project. They go after that big project. Right. And, and it, it would be a huge. So you look at Los Angeles today and it's going to be building to, for the next 20, 20 yeah. 30 years. Right. So now you're developing so that you can be part of that, yes. that, that whole project. Uh, urban planning right. that's taking place in Los Angeles. And I want to ask this question to my small biz pros out there in the marketplace. Uh, we got about nine minutes, which we still got to do our uh, org chart. Well, actually, so, we can take a quick little break because we've been going. But uh, you want to do I that? We could just go straight because we only have okay. eight minutes left. Well, well actually, we're actually, going to 415. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to take a quick break? Okay. So let's take a quick break. But when I come back, I want to tease you guys with this, okay? If you're a small business out there, I want you to start telling me how you think that collectively we can go after, say, a $10 million contract. You can call us at 323-293-3375, 323-293-3375. Let's take a break. All right. A new term for the times we're living in. Brace for it, parents of America. Alternative facts. Alternative facts. What are those? Oh, what? Alternative facts? Lies. I mean, fibs. Also known as stereotypes or false narratives. It's like saying black history began with slavery. That's offensive. Or that we'll never see another black president in our lifetime. What about me? This Black History Month, we're focusing on the facts. Not on ton of facts. Indisputable. Truth. Real. Black girl magic is real. Black boy joy is real. Black wealth is real. Black beauty is real. Black support is real. Black excellence is real. It's real. Black love, that's real. Black lives are real. I'm real. Black history didn't begin with slavery. And it doesn't end with the Obamas. Whom we love. And miss, no, like, really, we really miss you. Facts. We'll be back. So we're back on the business zone with... Crystal. And Gilbert Buchanan, your small business paramedic. And just before we took a break, uh, we were talking about How do you guys think that you could come together in a group, in a cluster, and provide different resources, barter your services to each other? Not all of it, just some of it, because I know some people are going to say, hey, I got to pay my bills. I'm not going to barter. That's not what we're saying. We're saying you can barter some of your services 
to get things done within your business and help somebody else at the same time too. And then together we can go after a big, bigger contract, you know, maybe 15, 20 million dollar contract with a county because the county right now has $3.9 billion dollars. And we're just trying to make sure that we get our piece of the pie. So, and, and it can be overwhelming if you're looking at doing it by yourself. So I'm sure yeah. you hear when you when you're talking about the contracts, people are thinking, "Ugh, I, I don't know if I can do that." Right? Yeah. They, even if they're not saying that to yeah. you, yeah. In their response to what you're teaching them, yeah. or or uh, instructing them, right. you can see some resistance, oh, yeah. and that resistance is fear mm-hmm. that. What if I can't do that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. What I that I don't have all the pieces right. to make that happen. And the beauty about this is you're not doing it alone. You've got help, you got assistance, you got support. So if you were to go after this opportunity by yourself, then yes, you could be afraid because you know, fear of the unknown. You don't really know what's gonna come up what they're going to ask you, and you may not be able to supply it, so you feel like you failed. But you're going to have additional resources in your corner to help you to go after this. So just want you guys to think about that. So we want to talk also about organizational chart. How many of you guys have an organizational chart? As we know in business, you have to be structured in order for your business to run smoothly. You got to have infrastructure. You got to have system. You got to have processes. Those are things that help us to work and run our business smoothly. (laughs) So when we need something, we can access it in seconds. Right. Your bookkeeper wants your 1099 or your W9. Do you know where it is? How do you get it to your bookkeeper? Your tax return for the last seven years. Do you know where that is? Those are part of your your infrastructure. So now, with that, you need to have a team. Now, many small businesses are sole proprietors. So as a sole proprietor, you wear all the hats. (laughs) You wear the red hat, the blue hat, the green hat, the brown hat, the white hat. You wear all of those hats because each one of those hats represent a different task within your business. It does. You are the marketing person. You are the outreach person. You're the bookkeeper. You're the CEO. You are the recruiter, the HR person. You're all of that. So true. So you got to learn, okay, now that I'm wearing all these hats, how do I structure it so my life is not in the tailspin where I'm doing all of this and I'm bringing in additional resources to help me? So in order to do that, a good way is to have an organizational chart. That organizational chart, it comes in two structures, two structures. You got a flat structure. Flat means everyone is on the same level. That would be if you are the jack of all trade. You are the CEO. You're the marketing person. You're the outreach. You're the bookkeeper. That's a flat org chart. That would be you. But your chart, you don't want your chart to look like that. You want to show some level of um, uh, lineation. That means people... They go up a few steps, and in terms of authority, you've got steps too. So that's what we call the tall chart. That's a tall structure. So at the head, you're going to have someone. Who is that someone? Is it the CEO? Is it the chairman? Is it your board of directors? Who is it? Yeah, right. Well, now, but what happens if, you know, a lot of our businesses, um, operate because they are one. So if you don't have that internally, again, it comes back to what you were just talking about, yeah. right? Creating that that structure yes. around your, um, she said, Whew, speaking the truth, <laughs> um, around these partners that you've, you've created. Exactly. Right? So you could create those people yes. in that if you're your solopreneur, which is what most of our people, people which is are. exactly the point I'm trying to make here. Right. So even if you don't have those people working in your organization, once you team up with those those individuals, those entities, you can bring them in as part of your org chart. So you have your chairman or your CEO then you've got your office manager, that right. person who runs the company right. while you're away cutting deals and, 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 uh, and trying to bring in more business. 
Then you've got your bookkeeper or accountant, right? You want to have a CPA, someone who reviews your taxes and review your accounting, right? Okay. Then you want to have、uh, you want to have a business development person, and depending on the kind of business you're in, you may want to you may want to have an engineer. You know, if you're in a, a manufacturing trade where you're you're touching product and there's quality control and engineering and, and, and building. All of those, you need to have those different entities, right? So, with that being said, you got to establish a chart within your organization. Now, when you establish your chart, your chart is not just going to be for how you look today, because the way you look today may be just you running around doing all these things. So,、right. you don't want to have a flat chart with just. You as a CEO, you as a marketing, you as a bookkeeping. No, you want to have a chart with the head, which is a CEO or owner. Then you have someone else below you, which is going to provide oversight when you're not around or if you can't do things. Right. So that person's right below you. Then you have business development managers. How many business development managers are you going to need to to reach out to business and bring in business? You know, maybe you need two, maybe you need three. So you want to have business development managers, and then you put a number two or three right there. Right. Okay.、And、then after your business development managers, you may want to have an IT person. You always want to have an IT person in your organization. That person takes care of your computers and all of those things. Now you may be that person right now, but you got to have that slot within your org chart. Now. When we're planning and structuring our business, we're thinking way ahead. We're not just thinking about today. We're thinking, okay. So if we're presented with a contract or a large opportunity from a large contract provider, how are we going to present ourselves so we don't seem so small, like a little mom and pop operation? <laughs> you see what yeah, I mean? Right. Exactly. So that's why you're structuring your org chart that way. So when they see that, okay, this person has a CEO, this person has an office manager, they've got business development people, they've got a, a bookkeeper or accountant, they've got、um, a, a marketer, they've got someone who's doing marketing, sales and marketing. You've got your IT. You also want to have legal within your organization. Legal. Every business need、yeah. need some level of attorney or or legal for litigation. And one thing that Crystal and I talk about all the time is, when you're in business, even though you think this may not happen, someone is gonna try to sue you <laughs> at some point in your business. They're gonna try to sue you, right? And you always want to be ready for that. So that's why you want to have legal. So when that happens, your attorney sends them a letter, squash things, or make a phone call, or have a sit down with them. Yeah, no, that's very true, and so a lot of time. But again, that's that entrepreneurial thought processing, and you have to trust people、yes. in order to make that happen. Yeah. But it, it by not limiting. So for me, I've always I collaborate for that very reason, right?、Yes. So because I'm an, a, a, a solo entrepreneur like most people as well,、mm-hmm. but I do nothing alone.、Mm-hmm. I have collaborative partners good, in every aspect of of every business that I do.、Yeah. Uh, the show, yeah. you're my collaborative partner.、Yeah. We've done some other business、right. together. And we got marketing,、uh, and we have we marketing, and in the digital piece I do, I have a marketing partner. So that I, it, 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 there's no way you can do all of that. I run nonprofit、uh, or our recycling black dollars along with my business partner. Yeah, right. And then I have a whole slew of other people. Yeah. That I can reach out to resources. To resources that if I'm marketing an event, then I have a whole network of people、yes. that I've developed. So there's like my org chart,、exactly. right? Exactly. So then I'm like, hey, I'm I'm doing this workshop and class. Yeah.、Uh, can you send it out to your、yes. network of people? Yes. Right. Yes. And that's how when I need taxes done,、uh-huh. I don't do taxes, but I do the backup. So、right. then I send that out to my person. Right. And then we trade off.、That's、I、right. send them business. I'm doing the book. Exactly.、Piece. I don't want to do the tax piece, so and, I'm going to send that to you. And also, just because, as human beings and businesses, we don't know everything. Because <laughs> we don't know everything, we want to have advisors. We want to have a, a handful of advisors that can help to advise our business. And that 
is going to be you want to strategically pick people from different industry, different areas, different levels who can help you. Right. Exactly. Some, some of these advisors can can make a phone call for you. They're an influencer. They can make a phone call to a bank and say, "Hey, my client or or my uh, my affiliate that I'm working with, they need a line of credit, hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand. Can you help them?" Or they may say, "Hey, they're trying to get a, a meeting with Edison. Can you guys make a phone call?" Right. Or that person may say, hey, I used to work at Edison. Let me tell you what they look for and how you can position yourself. So when you get in the door, you know how to present yourself. Uh, yeah. yeah. So those are the kind of advice, the advisement you're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know? So, yeah, because cause it helps you build this bigger business and while you don't have the re all the resources to do that. Yeah. So it's helping you do that. And so you can't look at it. And, and, and this is the piece. I never think of a, uh, think in a place of suspicion that this person is going to take the business from me. No. And I've been doing this. This is not something I just started. I have worked this way since I started. If my your business. business is structured properly, no one can come in and take right. your business. Because you, you are, <laughs> you're providing a specific service Yeah, and you've, Created or your your specific partners, yeah. your strategic partners yes. to align with your talents and mm -hmm, skills, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not concerned about them. And I'm doing the job that I agreed to do. Yes. So they don't see me as a threat. Right. And I don't see them as a threat. Right. Because we're working this together. Mm -hmm. And I think... When we look at us as African American people and yeah. how we're going to change the wealth gap, because yes. you know there there there's there's some reports out there by 2053 we will have zero net worth. That's no good at all. Do you guys hear that? <laughs> Did you guys hear that? What my co-host just said. My co-host said. So there are report reports out there stating that by the year 50, I mean, 2053, African-Americans will have zero assets, zero resources, zero, zero anything. Zero anything. <laughs> okay. And so that's our children. Right. Zero 50 because it's 2020. That's your children that's, and We're your not going to be kids. here in 53, okay. in, in 53 years. Yes. We could be very old. We won't be contributing to the economic pool at that point. So like every one of us in life and in history, what we do and what we do best is when someone tells us we can't do anything, we prove them wrong. So right. I want you to prove those reports wrong. That uh uh, there's no way African Americans are gonna have zero assets. I mean, what does that even mean? I know. I mean, that's like that's like nothing. No homes, no cars, no, no money jobs, in the bank. no money. So yeah. we will. Well, that is what we call the second slavery because yeah. you'd have to be living yeah. some way. So then someone has to be uh, taking care of you, right? If you have zero net worth. Yes. Yes. So that's why I want us to pool our resources, think about who we're doing business with, how we can um, elevate ourselves. And just remember, our ancestors before us, they had it worse than us. No, they and, had nothing. And they had nothing, and they made something out of it. Some of them owned land, acres and acres of land. Some of them started business, just like Mr. Stephen Smith right here that we just talked about. His net worth was 13.5 million dollars you know it was 500,000 but it's equivalent to mm -hmm. 13.5 million, million today dollars. yeah so if they can do it with nothing we should be able to do it too and like i say on my previous show let our ceiling our ceiling today be the flooring for our kids and grandkids okay yeah. so the maximum that we can achieve today that should be the minimum for our kids and our grandkids yes. moving forward. It has to be. Now, how do we get there? So obviously listening to our show weekly is a fantastic because we we have lots of stuff, but we're not the only podcasters out there. Nope. There are tons of, 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 of us and I have a, a slew of colleagues that are brilliant. So you need to 
Oh, and we talked about this last week. We talked about acquiring a coach and why yeah, a business yeah, coach can help you yeah. in order to take you to that next level. Yes. Because if you can't see it right now, mm -hmm. you need someone to help you do that. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing is we need to expand our library and our information. Yes. So that means we need to start reading <laughs> books. Mm -hmm. And if you're tired, I don't have. Everybody knows that I am about the most busiest human being on the planet. But, but you still I still read those books. I, I listen to books yeah. now. I listen to audio. And if you ever here's here's something for you. If you have a Prime, an Amazon Prime account, you get a credit a month for an audio book oh. that is free. Oh wow! So I every month I download a new book yeah. and I listen to it while I'm driving, mm -hmm. while I'm just working. If yeah. I'm not watching television uh -huh. or whatever, I am listening and graming. That is beautiful. That's how I get my information. That's how we can grow economic development. Uh, but, right. So get yourself some books, and yeah. I'm going to put on our new website. Oh yeah, a list of books. I that can't wait to see it. Be reading. I uh, is also going to be on our uh, my social media, uh, my, my, uh, Mitchell business solution. There's a number of books that's already on Mitchell business solution.com's website, but start reading, start getting information, start with your history. This is a perfect time. We're in black history month. Go read. So one book, black, um, black fortunes by, uh, his name is, um, Shamari Wilkes, W I L L I S the black Titan, A.E.G. Gaston, The Making of a Black Millionaire. Start with those books. And every week I'm going to bring you a new book mm -hmm. that you guys, if you don't have time to read, right. then get Audible and listen to it. Right. And, um, and, and we need to also start looking in other areas that's not common to us. Mm -hmm. How to invest your money. What's yeah. the, how, because your money is not going to come from you working every day. No. Your money has to come from either investment properties, mm -hmm. which is real estate. Mm -hmm. So you want to start reading books on how do you acquire the money in mm -hmm. order to start buying investment right. real estate. Right. Then you're going to start reading on uh, investment clubs. You want to do that. And then the stock market, mm -hmm. because that's where the money comes from. Yeah. That's how people become wealthy. Right, right now, understanding how you can go buy penny stocks, which is neck, a penny, mm -hmm. literally a penny. Mm -hmm. And you could buy a <coughs> hundred dollars could buy you a hundred shares. Right. Right. $500 could buy you 5,000 shares. And that's, that's a very good, good point that Crystal brought up. I, I want to throw this out there and enhance that point too, that as a business owner or as any type of business, whether you're a class business, B class, C class, your Fortune 100 or a Fortune 50,000. <laughs> I want you guys to know this, that money comes, money enters your business in three ways. Money enters your business three ways. One is through sales, okay? Sales, that's right. how money comes into your business. Right. Another way is through loans and investment. Right. So, so loans, you know, you, you get a loan, a line of credit, or you have an investment partner, or the other should be through other investments, investments in properties, properties or other resources. Some people do the stock market, whatever. But those are the three ways in which money enter your business. So with that being said, how are you guys going to go ahead and enhance your business? That's why Crystal been talking about multiple streams of revenues, multiple streams. Because if you're not getting it enough through sales, you don't really want to go get a loan. So the investment is another lucrative way. And that could be investing in multiple streams of revenue. Exactly. Keep and investing in, in other business. So yeah. we're coming to the close of our show. Thank you guys so much. Uh, next week, I believe we have MJ Duffy coming back to oh, talk about wow. her book. The Valentine the, Show. The Valentine Show. So she's going to come back because she's got the, her launch of her uh, her third book in her series, I like Defiant that. Love. So she's already give, provided it for me. We have a bottle of wine that we're going to uh, give away to our callers like we did her book. Uh -huh. um, so if you um, tune in next uh, next Friday 
for uh, a return visit of MJ Duffy talking about maybe we'll have her read uh, the the stuff that we can read on the air yeah. from Defiant <laughs> Love and have her talk about the book. <laughs> but she's having her launch party on March 20, I think it's 24th. I Yeah, we'll get the date for you. And uh, we want you guys to tune in next week. It's been a great show. Oh, I love this show. This is unbelievable. Yeah, so Thank- next week, another Black History Moment. I hope you guys are garnering at least one point from this show today. We're not professing that we know everything we're not professing that you guys should follow everything we're saying but we're just saying just pick one thing take that one thing and make it better make it work for your business exactly and and this is black history month which we call black history year we want to make sure that you guys are doing something to enhance your business right so you can grow your business right you don't want to be in the same place we're in february come december of 2020 you want to be five steps beyond where you were at the end of December 31st, exactly. 2019. Exactly. Exactly. So we, you can go to our new website at www, the business zone with crystal and Gilbert and check out the new site. Leave us some comments, go to our social media sites, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We appreciate that. Uh, Gilbert's uh, on social media now. He's very active on Facebook. Oh, so yes. reach out to Gilbert now. Thanks to Crystal. <laughs> she whipped me over the head and kicked me in the butt multiple times and kind of twisted my arm and forced me to learn how to use social media and use it to my advantage. So, And I think you know, you're enjoying it. I'm enjoying it right now. You guys should do the same thing. Don't be too resistant to it because that's a new wave. That's where it's business that's and, where it and is. economy Not going anywhere. is going right now. So check it out. Oh. I also want to let you guys know. Real quickly, that my sh- my uh, workshop, my next workshop is this coming Wednesday at the Urban League from 5 to 8. And this time it's about setting, looking at the things you need, giving your business a tune-up. What is it you need to make sure that your business gets you to the next level? You know, do you have your, your articles of incorporation? Do you have insurance? Do you have certification? Do you have a contract? If you don't, what do you need? Uh, do you have your back office set up right? So that's what we're going to cover and we'll see you Tuesday at the Recycling Black Dollars Breakfast Mixer. Come out so you can get your our new resource guide hot off the press at Denny's at 8 o'clock on Tuesday, February 11th. And that's Denny's on Crenshaw and Coliseum. We will see you there. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, happy Black History Month. Um, and we will see you next Friday. We're Have a out. Great one. Thank you, all my Facebook supporters. As a small biz pro, I so we roll. Using procurement, program, and control. As a small biz pro, I so we grow. Using procurement, program, and control. I'm a business man. Yes, I'm an entrepreneur.